think we can all relate to the, to the notion that the pace of change in security is faster than we've ever seen it. For a variety of reasons, right? IT is changing fast, our business models are changing very quickly, and the threat landscape is moving at a rate that we've never seen in the past. And then we've got different kinds of threats. Obviously, we're seeing, you know, just this last year, I think 40% of breaches that we've, we've seen are coming from inside our enterprises. So a lot of them have talked a lot for years about insider attacks in this industry, but now those insider attacks, I think, are becoming very, very real for many of us who are out there on the front lines. So we've got a volume issue, a lot more threats coming our way, a velocity issue, speed with which we need to be able to respond, the diversity and types of attacks that we're dealing with, all changing you know, in, in, in ways that, in, in many ways, we can't even anticipate. But we're also seeing a big shift <clears throat> towards the personalization of the attacks. And Brandy mentioned this for, briefly in her talk. And a lot of that really you know, is, is, I would say, highlighted by what we saw in the OPM breach where no longer was the, the data people look, were looking for just about social security numbers or credit cards, they're actually going and looking for specific information about specific individuals. So we've, we're moving from kind of generic data breaches to highly targeted attacks at specific individuals' identities. One of the other big shifts that we're seeing right now is the potential, I would say, for a real crossover from just cybersecurity being about protecting data and information to the need to be able to protect against physical attacks or physical threats. The reason for that is very simple. Because we're connecting devices, we're connecting machines, because we can take and create a whole that's far superior than the sum of the parts. Because the ability to see even basic things, like to see the consistent definition of a threat and a response all the way through a system, gives you an ability to look at the end of that system and understand what your threat defense life cycle actually looks like. For most folks, in order to understand what your time period and what your response mechanisms are for threat defense, you have to look at the industry standard default tool, Outlook. Because you're going to be going in and tracking emails between folks to figure out what that looks like. So by providing that end-to-end -end system visibility, just as one example, we can really push forward as an industry. And if I think about what we want to drive to, the outcomes we as an industry need to provide to each of you for that integrated security system, four things come to mind. The first is protection effectiveness. As Chris talked about, while we're extending our strategy from protection heavy to protect, detect, and correct, the importance of protection is still absolutely first and foremost for us. If you go from billions of attacks to tens of thousands of security events, even a change in protection effectiveness of 0.001% has a massive, massive impact on the number of security events and that talent shortage, that talent uh, crux that we just talked about. The second piece is detection. Being able to make sure that you know the attacks that are actually in your environment, the ones that are targeted against you, right? This is a lot of what Brent talked about, moving into hunting mode. The third piece is correction. How fast can we take that time? The time from when you've discovered an attack to when it's fully contained within your system and eliminated, taking that and dramatically reducing it. The fourth is really about efficiency. Measured simply, how many events per day can any one of us handle? That's how good of a job we can do for the organization. Because with the types of attack velocity that we're seeing, right, and Chris talked about the, the numbers from McAfee Labs earlier, with that type of velocity, there is no way we will be able to bring in enough human beings to solve this problem. There are not enough of people that have the intelligence and capability of the folks in this room to solve this problem. We have to give you the automation that's going to change the game. So it's really that integrated system we want to bring. Now, it's not just about us, though. Chris talked about this. We want to be your number one security partner. We have no illusion that we're going to be your only security partner. 